What's up everybody? It's Andrew and welcome to the 13th Java tutorial. We're going to be talking about the nested loop, nested for loop, and let's get right into it. I already have a little bit of code here. You should know by now, um, just importing the scanner. So in this video, we're going to be creating a right triangle made with a star pattern. You're going to use the star, which is if you press, uh, if you hold down shift and press eight, it's an asterisk. So we're gonna be creating a right triangle with the stars. So let's create some variables real quick. We'll need uh, the height of the triangle. And then we need our scanner. Ooh, what am I doing? There we go. So we have our height, which is going to be an integer, and then we have our scanner object to take input. Now we need to ask the user for our height. So I'll just enter height of triangle. I don't like to use print line when I get info or info from the user because I want the input to be on the same line. And then we'll set the variable of height to keyboard.nextint. All right, now we are going to create our nested loop. So we know how to do a for loop. Remember, it's four, and then you have your argument with your three parts, and then on the inside of the curly braces, we run a code. So what we're gonna do is create a for loop, and then inside of that for loop, inside of um, the curly braces, we are actually gonna create a second for loop that's gonna run, and it's called a nested for loop. So let's make our outer loop. You write four, and then we initialize our counting variable, which we will call i, and we're going to set this to 1. So i equals 1. Now what are we going to compare it to? So for a condition, we're going to have i is less than or equal to height. And then we will increment it by 1 each time. So that's going to be our outer variable. set i to 1, as long as it's less than or equal to height, run the code, and then we're going to add one to it each time. Now for our inner loop. So how you do an inner loop or a nested loop is going to be the same thing. So you're going to do another for loop, and then you need to declare a variable. Obviously, it's going to have to be a different variable. So we're going to call it j. And we want to set that to a value. Now the reason we're using j is the same reason we're using i. It's kind of just um, what programmers do. It's just it's like a standard. You're going to use i for your outer loop and j for your inner loop and that's just just how it works. I'm not sure if there's like a real reason behind why the letters are chosen but typically this is how it goes. So for, we need a condition for our inner loop, and for this one to create this type of pattern that we want, we're going to do j is less than or equal to i. And I'll explain why that works. And then we need an incrementer again for j, and we'll just set, um, set j to add one each time it runs. Okay, so now we have our inner loop and our outer loop. We need to have the inner loop do the action that we want. So for this, we're creating a triangle with a pattern, star pattern. So let's have it output, and we're gonna have it system.out.print, and we're gonna put the star, which is shift eight. Okay, now that we have that, 
we're gonna have, once it exits that loop, we're gonna have it have Java break down a line. And how you do that is system.out.print and it's backslash in. And what that does is this right here, Java reads backslash in as new line. It's not gonna actually output backslash in, it's gonna read it, know what it means, interpret it, and it's gonna break down a line. So, let's go ahead and run this. And it's gonna say enter height of triangle. We will just do five, and there you go. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, and five. Now to show you how this works as simply as possible, put some comments in it. So this is the outer loop, and this is the inner loop. This second loop is within the outer loop. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, first thing we're going to take input for height, right? So we can just go ahead and put, oops, height equals five. We know that because that's what we put. And so when we go into this for loop, it, we're going to initialize i to one. So we know that i equals one. And we're going to test it. Is 1 less than or equal to 5? It is. That's true. So we're going to go inside of this for loop and start this one. You can ignore i for now. i doesn't matter. All that matters is that we're inside of this loop now. So now we're going to run this for loop. So int j. We're going to initialize j to 1. Now we're going to test. Is 1 less than or equal to 1. Well, that is true because it's equal. So we're going to run this system.out.print and we're going to have a star. And what this star is, is this star right here. Now we're still within this loop. But now, since our incrementer is j, we are going to set j equal to 2. And we're going to test it again is 2 less than or equal to 1. Well, that's false. So we are going to exit the inner loop. We're going to exit this inner loop and then go down to right here. And when you exit a loop, this goes away. The values that you set to your variable, they disappear. They reset. They, they don't matter anymore. So it's gone from the memory. So there is no j equals 2 anymore. So after we exit that, we go down to here, and then we're going to break a new line. So that's this right here. Now we're on this line. We haven't put these stars or anything, but we have moved down to the second line. All right, so we're still in this loop, right? We went through this. We exited. We broke a line, but we're still in here. So now we're going to increment i to 2 because we perform the whole entire loop now. So now i is equal to 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 5? Yes, that's true. So we're going to go inside of this loop. We are now here. Int j equals 1 because we initialized it as 1. And it's going to say is 1 less than or equal to 2. Yes, it is. So we're going to output this star right here. That's this star. And then we are going to add 1 to j. So j is now equal to 2. Test it again. Is 2 less than or equal to 2? Yes, that's true. So we'll go inside of the loop and output this star right here. After that, we're going to increment j. So j is now equal to 3. We're going to test again. Is 3 less than or equal to 2? That's false. We are going to 
exit this loop, these values go away, and we are going to break down a line. So we were here, now we're down here. Now we are still in the main loop, right? And since we finished the entire action of that loop, we are going to increment by one. So we're now equal to three. And we're gonna test again. Is three less than or equal to five? That's true, we're gonna enter. Initialize j to one, and then test. Is one less than or equal to three? Yes, that's true, enter, star. That's this star right here. Increment, two. Is two less than or equal to three? True again. Enter that loop, we have another star, which is this star. We're gonna increment j to three. Test it again. Is three less than or equal to three? Once again, that's true, we're gonna output a star. And we're gonna increment j to four. Is four less than or equal to three? False. So what we're gonna do is break out of this loop and we're gonna get rid of these values and we are gonna break down a line. So we were here getting ready to output if it was true, but it's not, so we're gonna go down a line. Now remember, we're still in this outer loop. So we're gonna increment this to four and we're gonna do the exact same thing. J is equal to one. Is that true? Is one less than or equal to four? Yes, that's true. So we have this star. J is now gonna be equal to two. Is that less than or equal to four? Yes. That star, three, same thing. Yes, that's less than or equal to four. Same thing, four, same thing. Less than or equal to four. So we, we've now output these stars. Once we increment to five, this is now false. So we are gonna exit, we're gonna break down another line and now get rid of these values. And now guess what, i is equal to five. So is five less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. Go inside, same thing. We're gonna create our j variable and it's gonna be equal to one. We're gonna test this value. And then if it's true, we're gonna output a star. Same thing all the way three, four, and five. So is five less than or equal? Yep, so we can output this star. And then j is gonna equal six because it's gonna get incremented. And we're gonna run a test, it's gonna be false. We're gonna exit this loop, get rid of those values. And then we are going to break down to the next line, which is down here. Now, height was equal or height is five, our last i variable was five, so we're gonna increment that to six. So i is now equal to six. We're gonna test it. Is six less than or equal to height? Negative. No, it's not. Six is greater than five. So we're gonna exit this loop entirely. Now we are down here. And as you can see, the loop is done and we have nothing else to perform. That is the entire nested for loop. And that's how that works. I hope that was a good explanation. It's kind of a, um, a difficult topic to understand, but basically it's a loop with inside a loop. And you have an outer and an inner loop. And you can perform this, like we, we chose like an easy number, which is five. But I mean, you can perform as many numbers you want to. So if we wanted to do 100, the height of the triangle would be 100 right there. So we have all the way to 100. And I trust my computer and I bet that's 100. So I hope that helped kind of verify and help you understand what a nested for loop is. And thanks for watching my tutorial and I will see you in the next one.